You're watching Tag TV. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spell-binding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides in the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Skyrim Zimik and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. The Northern Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir has opened the gates of its world-famous tulip garden for people to experience the nature's beauty at its best. Several new arrangements have been done by the authorities this time, along with hosting a two-day music festival, which was just like an icing on the cake. A perfect destination for Bollywood filmmakers, the renowned Indira Gandhi Memorial Tulip Garden in Srinagar is beauty personified. Formerly known as Siraj Bagh, the garden is located in the heart of the city and is sandwiched between Zabarwan Hills and picturesque Dal Lake. At the moment, tourists are landing in Kashmir to soak their senses in the vibrant hues of tulips that are blooming in full glory. एक तो ट्यूलिप गार्डन इज अ वेरी स्पेशल प्लेस क्योंकि ये साल में बस कुछ ही महीनों के लिए खुलता है सो इट्स एक्सट्रीमली स्पेशल एंड ऐसे फेस्टिवल्स आई थिंक कश्मीर में बहुत ही इम्पॉर्टेंट हैं क्योंकि दे ब्रिंग अबाउट अ सेंस ऑफ नॉर्मल सी दे ब्रिंग दे प्रमोट टूरिज्म एंड इट ऑल्सो ब्रिंग्स अबाउट अ सेंस ऑफ कम्युनिटी सब साथ मिल के इंजॉय करें सेलिब्रेट करें सो आई थिंक दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ इनिशिएटिव इज वेरी वेलकम This year more than 15 lakh tulips of 62 varieties have blossomed in this Asia's largest tulip garden which is spread across an area of over 30 hectares. Daffodils, hyacinths, narcissus and other ornamental plants have also been planted to ornate the area along with adding more green spaces for the comfort of tourists. Visitors can even avail the benefits of surplus facilities like free Wi-Fi, more fountains and drinking points while enjoying the surreal view and rhapsody of colors. हमें बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है यहाँ आके एक relax जिस कहते हैं ना रूह एक ताज़ा हो गई यहाँ आके ऐसे वापस वो चीज देखने के लिए जिसके लिए हर एक तड़पता है कि कश्मीर आए टूलिप गार्डन देख ले और हर किसी से मिले यहाँ पे आ, कश्मीर को जन्नत के ही कहते ही है तो आइए सब लोग आइए टूरिज्म को भी हम कह रहे हैं कि प्रमोट करो ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोग आ जाएं यहाँ पे कश्मीर के लोगों से मिले और हमारी खूबसूरती देखे The two-day music festival held inside the premises of the garden provided yet another delightful experience. Several singers including local ones from the Union territory performed some fabulous numbers enthralling the audience. Organized by the Tourism and Floriculture Department, the event was thrown open by Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha in the presence of Kerala Governor Arif Muhammad Khan. During the event, Sinha said that more destinations will be opened soon to promote tourism in the Union Territory. मैंने यहाँ भी कहा है कि टूरिज्म का बजट भी हमने बढ़ाया है. और नए डेस्टिनेशन डेवलप करने के लिए हम कोशिश करने वाले हैं और मुझे लगता है कि और भी अनेक ऐसे नए डेस्टिनेशन हैं जिनको हम डेवलप करेंगे वो तो देश और दुनिया के लोग आएंगे ट्रैकिंग के लिए भी 11 स्थानों को हमने खोला है इस दिशा में अनेक प्रयत्न हम कर रहे हैं 
stealing the show and hearts of many was the performance by renowned singer and rapper Badshah. He treated the audience to a number of hits, drawing huge applause and whistles from them. Spectators click the singer on their phones so that they can cherish this moment throughout their life. बहुत खुशी मिली है कि आज इतना बड़ा जश्न था बहुत ही अच्छा लगा लोकल भी है यहाँ लोग टूरिस्ट भी है और हजारों में लोग है काफी अच्छा लगा पहली बार कि टूरिज्म ने ऐसा फेस्टिवल किया यहाँ पे टूलिप गार्डन में इससे बहुत ही अच्छा लगा और भी टूरिस्ट आएंगे लोकल आएंगे बहुत उम्मीद थी हमें इस साल के लिए लेकिन हमें खुशी है वो उम्मीद अब पूरी हो गई Opened annually for a month at the beginning of spring, Tulip Garden not just lends an ethereal atmosphere to the valley, but also a host of entertainment and employment opportunities as well. Land of various faiths and festivals, every day is a celebration in India. People of different religions, castes, greed and backgrounds celebrate these festivals together as a show of unity and brotherhood. Recently, Kanpur city celebrated its regional festival Ganga Mela where locals of different communities came together at one platform. Religious festivals are a great way to celebrate a tradition or ritual and tie citizens in a common knot of love, peace and brotherhood. One among them is Ganga Mela, an annual cultural festival celebrated exclusively in the city of Kanpur. Recently, as it observed its 88th edition, people of different communities took to the streets to immerse in the festivities of Ganga Mela. इस बार हम लोग अपना सीमा उत्सव मना रहे हैं और आज पूरे जोश और खरोश के साथ भव्य जलूस के साथ शहर वासियों को रंगों सरोवर के लिए हम लोग निकले हैं। Citizens mired in colors walk through the streets to mark the occasion. While some showered flowers and celebrated Holi, other exchanged sweets. It's been said that in the year 1942, the then British officer banned the use of colours during Holi, to which a group of youngsters belonging to Kanpur's Hatia locality revolted under the leadership of Babu Gulab Chandrasheth and were jailed for the same. The action led to fury and the entire city as a mark of protest decided to play holy until the arrested youngsters were set free. The British government ultimately bowed to their demand and released the youngsters. After their release holy was played again which then became a tradition. Aaj jo parampara hai iski ye yahan par Gulab Chand Seth ji the jinka dehant ho gaya hai उनके पुत्र मूलचंद सेठ जी जो हैं इसको उठाते चले आ रहे हैं उन्नीस से पहले से उठ रहा है उन्नीस से पहले 42 में ही ये कार्यक्रम शुरू हो गया था लेकिन अंग्रेजों ने इस पर प्रतिबंध लगा दिया था जब अंग्रेजों ने प्रतिबंध लगाया जो लोग होली खेल रहे थे उनको जेलों में डाल दिया तो एक हफ्ते के बाद उनको जेलों में छोड़ा गया इसलिए कानपुर की होली की परम्परा है जिस दिन होली में आग लगती है एक हफ्ते तक होली मनाई जाती है आज हम लोग हिंदू मुस्लिम मिलकर पूरे हिंदुस्तान को ही नहीं और देश के लोगों को ये बताना चाहते हैं कि हमारा मुल्क की एकता और अखंडता मजबूत है यहाँ सभी धर्म के लोगों का आदर है सब सम्मान से रहते हैं इट इज ट्रू सेलिब्रेशन एंड ओकेजन लाइक दीज दैट पीपल ऑफ डिफरेंट रिलीजन एंड कम्युनिटीज गेट ए चांस टू कम क्लोजर टू इच अदर एंड सेलिब्रेट यूनिटी इन डाइवर्सिटी Now a round up of some of the major stories that made news recently. Forest officials in India's western Gujarat state have set up more than 450 water points in Gir National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary which is home to Asiatic lions. Roughly 600 Asiatic lions live in the 850 square mile expanse of the Gir Sanctuary, a popular tourist attraction in Gujarat. कुछ वाटर पॉइंट्स को लोकली भाषा में कुटिया बोलते हैं यानी कि 
ज़मीन में खोद के जो ग्राउंड वाटर निकालते हैं कुछ जगह प्रॉपर बोर करके पानी को जो डंकी द्वारा यानी कि जो हैंड पंप द्वारा भरा जाता है कुछ जगह में सोलार या विंड पावर यूज़ करते हैं जिससे कि पानी कुदरती रीते आती रहे सो देर आर डिफरेंट वेस बाय विच वाटर मैनेजमेंट इज डन Rising temperatures adversely affect the metabolic rate of animals. The first impact is apparent through a reduced appetite. In such a scenario, taking such an initiative is quite appreciable. Two French Navy ships recently arrived at India's southern port city of Kochi to participate in a joint naval exercise. Indian Navy accorded a ceremonial welcome to the French warships, assault helicopter carrier Tonnerre and Sarkar frigate. As per the media reports, the ships will sail to the Bay of Bengal for the two-day joint exercise which will begin from April 5 between France and the Quad members. Last year, the Quad members including India, the United States, Japan and Australia began their largest naval exercises in over a decade. India is a country where Sufism has not just flourished but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. Even today, the teachings of these saints inform the lives of people and their shrines act as a medium for people to connect to God. Serving the same is a symbolic shrine of Chote Bare Sarkar located in the Faridabad city of Northern Haryana state where people of all faiths offer prayers. <laughs> Situated in the Faridabad district of Haryana, the symbolic shrine of Chote Bade Sarkar has been serving as a synergy of communal harmony for generations. People of all castes and communities visit the shrine to pay their obeisance to both the Sufi saints, Bade Sarkar and Chote Sarkar, and seek their blessings. The shrine is believed to have healing powers and therefore a number of people suffering from different medical problems can be seen visiting the shrine. Ye ya atwa teen saal hai. Main bahut pareshan thi, bahut bimar thi, bahut bimar thi. Lekin jab se babaji ke darbar mein aayi hu, to se mujhe bahut aaram hai. Mere ghar mein pura aaram hai. Bahut hi acha laga. To sabko yahi bolenge ki babaji ke darbar mein zarur aaye. Sabhi dharm ke log aate hain. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai sabhi dharm ke log aate hain. शिवाले irrespective of faith even the caretaker of shrine is a hindu man whose family has been taking care of it for generations ye chote bade sarkar ka darbar hai badayu sharif se hum badayu sharif se gaddi nasheen hai sarkar se to sarkar ka hume hukm hua ki aap yahan gaddi lagao to sarkar ki jab se yahan gaddi lagayi jaati hai aur kafi dur dur se zahirin yahan aate hain hamare paas mein aur unka yahan pe इलाज होता है ये आस्था और विश्वास का केंद्र है सरकारों का और बहुत बड़ी आस्था है यहाँ पे लोगों की जो सरकारों पे यहाँ आ रही है Bari Sarkar was born in Bukhara in 1188 and left the material world in Badayun in 1230 Like many other Sufi saints before him he too traced his lineage from the family of Hazrat Muhammad Chote Sarkar on the other hand was his most famous disciple and spiritual successor Both the brothers throughout their life propagated the message of peace and brotherhood and are thus revered by all communities till date Moving on It's been 60 years since Yuri Gagarin a Russian pilot and cosmonaut became the first person to fly in space on April 12, 1961. Since then, a number of milestones have been achieved in space exploration. India too has taken long strides when it comes to space achievements. 
from launching small rockets of just 30 to 70 kg's payloads to carrying 4,000 kg payload to outer space. India Space Agency ISRO has come a long way since its formation on August 15, 1969. Formed by the great Indian physicist and astronomer Dr. Vigram Sarabhai, ISRO was earlier known as Indian National Committee for Space Research that was formed in 1962. Today, let's take a stroll into India's space journey with excerpts from the country's renowned scientists. Very soon after Yuri Gagarin went into space and returned spa uh, uh, safely, that was a remarkable moment. But the following year, India formed its uh, predecessor of uh, space agency. That was called INCOSPAR, Indian Committee on uh, Space Research. And in 1969, uh, it uh, became a full-fledged Indian Space Research Organization, or in short, ISRO. And since then, ISRO has made tremendous progress. So India is certainly not left behind and is among the top five or six uh, uh, countries in the world. And it stands shoulder to shoulder with them in terms of achievements. So the last 20 years have been remarkable achievements uh, of ISRO, beginning with the uh, starting to develop uh, cryogenic engine technology and then trying to get as much as possible self-reliant. We started uh, only in uh, our uh, activities somewhere in 1963 by launching the first uh, rocket on 21st November or 22nd, 29th November 1963 from Thumba. And then uh, 69 uh, uh, ISRO was uh, formed, in, in course for ISRO was formed. And even during those days when the Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station was uh, dedicated to UN for uh, upper atmospheric research, Russians were involved in it. They used to send some rockets. Their scientists used to come. Uh, we had a more detailed interaction with Russians when we started working for Aryabhat. Okay, in 1972, uh, uh, you know, some sort of MOU was signed with Russians. So we had an interaction as far as space is concerned. But uh, India had interaction on space science. You know, their scientists used to come visit. Our scientists used to go there. Similarly, on educational front also, we had a collaboration with them. You know, IIT Bombay is, was, uh, they helped a lot in establishing IIT Bombay. To my knowledge, we did not get any technology. Okay, I was involved from, uh, for the last 50 years, I know it. We did not get any technology. But they taught us, uh, or they, by interaction, we came to know that how to get into the space technology, how to write the documents, how to test it and all those things we got it but they never gave us a technology. One of the major achievement in last one year, you know, that uh, it's a privatization initiative. Because what we have been talking of privatization for last so many years, it is a, almost like a government public sector way. It is like a vendor development that uh, I pay and you do it. But uh, it is a, a privatization is a true sense, the entities themselves will generate money, they will themselves generate a program, they will launch it and market it. Now, this is a one step, you know, which has come in the last year and uh, which will take this country much forward, you know, because uh, ISRO a presence is an example to other industries to how to run it efficiently and quality conscious way. So this has a much more effects on other industries, our education system, our research systems and all. So we need to multiply and their only way out is a privatization and they, I am only looking forward to a future where there will be not one ISRO but there will be many ISRO's. Next, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our new edition, World in Focus. The 
The construction industry of Japan is bringing to use the latest technology that uses high-quality material for power transmission in the building. Furukawa Electric has developed a high-performance low-voltage aluminium conductor CV cable, which is also known as Rakuraku cable. Earlier, copper cable were used in the buildings, but now aluminium cables are preferred as they are soft and light in weight. Moreover, they require less manpower and are convenient to fix. As ensuring safety for workers while handling heavy machinery at construction sites remains a priority in Japan. These aluminium cables have become the most preferred among construction companies for the same. Next, we take you to the luxurious apartments built by Shimizu Corporation in Nagoya City of Japan. The texture of the wood and concrete used in these apartments gives us an impression of a typical Japanese image. Japan has a rich heritage of wood use and the growing usage of this sustainable material has given boost to its cultivation as well. The wood used in the living space of each apartment has a beautiful texture. In addition, rooms can be separated to make a private space. Moreover, as Japan practices high safety standards against disasters like earthquake and fire, therefore the latest material by Shimizu Corporation is used. え、当社で開発しました、え、スリム耐火ウッドの、え、柱と針。え、CLT え、こういった二重の、え、燃えない仕組みを、え、柱張りに取り入れて、え、耐火試験を繰り返し建物構造に使えるようにしております。Simizu Corporation has demonstrated high quality housing around the world. It had also designed and built apartments in Indonesia. Its concrete and wood structure impersonates traditional Japanese culture and its earthquake and fire resistance. A chocolatier has created a helicopter made entirely out of chocolate in support of air ambulance workers at Fockingham in England. Video and photos show Hansen working on his creation and standing next to the finished chococopter. The tasty treat was built on a 7 feet tall Easter egg shell and weighs 120 kg. The chocolatier, who has owned a chocolate shop in Lincolnshire since 1986, hopes his sweet creation will raise funds for the local air ambulance charity, Links and Knots Air Ambulance. The Saudi capital Riyadh was lit up with illuminated artworks as the city hosted Nu Riyadh, meaning Lights of Riyadh, festival showcasing intricate light installation made by 60 local and international artists. The light festival was held with the aim of boosting the country's creative economy and turning the capital to a center of new forms of arts. Organized by Riyadh Art, the festival witnessed artistic contribution of 23 Saudis, including many female visual artists. بالنسبة لنا كنساء سعوديات والمرأة السعودية الآن بإمكانها أن تصل أين ما تريد حيث ما تريد يعني ما عاد في يعني معوقات زي أول والحمد لله الدعم متوفر وتمكين المرأة أقوى بكثير ومفهوم تمكين المرأة برضو أقوى بكثير المرأة السعودية الآن وصلت إلى ما تريد وشريتة بتحققها من كانت هي صغيرة الحمد لله the citywide festival featured 33 installations, sculptures, lighting displays and interactive performances across Riyadh to be enjoyed by the public for free. That's all we have for you this week. 
Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia.anin.com. I'm your host, Karim, and it's goodbye from the entire production team.